What is up guys, welcome back to the channel and we're continuing on the El Camino Ellis Swap build. Now this one, I believe we're on video 13, which is uh, the appropriate number because on this one, we're gonna be going over the wiring. Now, I'm gonna show you guys how to do the wiring the way I do it, which is pretty much bulletproof. Now we did cover the harness that came with the vehicle, that what wires we're gonna reuse, what wires we're not gonna reuse, um, and how to pull all the wires out that you don't need. So now we're gonna go over the wiring that's specifically for the LS engine and everything else that we're gonna use with the LS engine. For example, air conditioning, Dakota digital, Dakota digital gauges, Holly Terminator X, stuff like that. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, like I mentioned before, all the wiring on the vehicle, especially on vehicles you're probably gonna be doing, um, it's gonna be old. Now, think about this wiring. This is an 87, so the wiring's gonna be what? 35, 30, 35 to 40 years old wiring. Now with that being said, I'm sure it still works fine for what it has, like the starting circuit, whatever else is still in there, that's electrical, lights, all that stuff. I'm sure the wiring is still good for that, but now we're gonna be adding more stuff to it. We're gonna be adding an ECU. This was never controlled by ECU. This was never fuel injected. So we're gonna be adding all that stuff to it. So we don't wanna add it to the stock wiring. We wanna, we wanna basically use the stock wiring to activate a different circuit that's gonna support all the power that we need for the extra stuff we're gonna be added. So let me show you how I'm gonna do that. So the way we're gonna do that is real simple, guys. Relays. Relays are used to um, basically control big power with little power. And what I mean by that is if you look at this red wire and this blue wire here, these wires here can handle 30 to 40 amps. Now, in order to handle that, we need to hook up the correct size wire to the battery, which will be 10 gauge wire on this red one will be routed to the battery with a 40 amp fuse. And then the blue one is gonna power up our own little fuse circuit right here that we got off Amazon. Uh, if you wanna get the same one, I'll show you the links. This is the one for the relay, the one that we're using. And this is the one for this little fuse box here. Uh, the links are always up in the, in the description, guys. I started adding that a few videos back. Dang it, hold on, let me try to use both of my hands with this thing. Ah. So I started adding the links in the description or the description below. So it makes it easy guys, for you guys to buy the parts. Now I don't get any kind of kickback or anything like that. So if you wanna shop there, fine. If you don't, you know, go to somewhere else to shop. I don't really care, it doesn't matter to me. I'm just trying to make it easier for you guys. All right, so what we're gonna do is, this fuse box here can handle up to 30 amps combined. So let's say we have six circuits and if we put five amps on each, five times six is 30. Fuck, I hope my math is correct. So you could do a mix and match. You could do like 10, 10, five, five, and like two and a half, two and a half, I guess. Or you could just set it up to where the combined output is gonna be no more than 30. Now the reason I use this is because if you look here, it has a little positive here, a little plus. So that's gonna be where this blue wire will end up at. Now, if we solder a 10 gauge wire here, it'll eventually end up here. This, wire, this power wire here is gonna be 10 gauge because it's gonna feed all these different outputs right here. And like I said, the 10 gauge should be able to handle 30 to 40 amps, and this should be combined no more than 30 amps. Now, what I like about this style right here is that you look at the bottom one, this post right here, this is for a ground. So you can run the same size wire, a 10 gauge wire from here to a good ground, either all the way to the battery or chassis ground or engine ground. I'm gonna use engine ground because it's more solid. So I'm gonna run a, a black wire from here, 10 gauge to my engine ground. And then now each one of these little posts here, is gonna be a separate ground. So let's say I'm inside the cab and I need a ground for my Terminator X, I can put it there. If I need a ground for my Dakota digital gauges, I can put it the next one. If I need a ground for my uh, transmission connector on my ECU, I can put it there. If I need a ground for my AC unit, I can put it there. So I can use all these here so that way you know you have a good ground because all these are getting grounded through this ground wire here. Same thing for the positive one. I'm running uh, 12 volts here, but now at 12 volts, it's gonna be key on power. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna set up my relay. Like I mentioned before, this red wire, it's gonna go to the fuse. This is the fuse I use right here. Of course, link is in the description. 
I'm gonna run that. Now the fuse is gonna be as close as it can be to the battery. That way it protects everything after the fuse. So I'm gonna run the fuse. I'm gonna run it to here. Then when this relay turns on, it'll provide uh, the blue wire 12 volts, which would be hooked up to my fuse box. So the way I do that is I'm gonna ground this black wire here so it always has a ground. This white wire, I'm gonna find a key on cranking 12 volt source and hook it up to this white wire here. So the reason I can do that is because relays, they draw less than one amp on the control side. This white wire and this black wire here are the control sides. So they draw less than one amp. One amp isn't really anything. So you can basically add this white wire to any wire in your ignition system that has 12 volt key on and cranking, and then it'll control this relay. So it'll turn this relay on. When you turn the key on, even when you crank it, it'll leave this relay turned on. That means this will get 12 volts. And anything that I need key on, cranking power to, I can hook up here and here and here. Now, if I need 12 volts constant power, this one will not have it. Neither of these will have it. I have to go straight to the battery or I have to hook it up to the red side of the relay. Because remember, this is going to be go straight. The red one's going straight to the battery. So this one will always have 12 volts. This blue one will only have 12 volts when I turn the key on or when it's cranking. So you guys got to make sure you understand that because if you hook up a red wire here that needs 12 volts constant power, it's not going to have it. It'll lose the power when you turn the key off. So let's go ahead and dry it up, how we're gonna wire it up. So hopefully it makes more sense to you guys. All right guys, so here's the game plan, it's pretty simple. So we have our battery voltage here, or our battery here. We're gonna have the fuse right here. That's the fuse. That's gonna be hooked up to this red wire here. So this red wire is, this is a relay here. So this red wire is gonna come out here, go to a fuse, and then go to the battery. This will have 12 volts at all times. This will have 12 volts at all times. Up here, this will be my white wire. So this white wire, we have to find a key on cranking switch. So that has uh, power when it's the power, when the key is on and it's cranking, most likely is gonna be a pink wire. It could be orange in some vehicles, but for us, it should be a pink wire. So we're gonna tap into that pink wire. Try to find a wire that's thicker than what you're using. So like, cause that wire obviously feeds power to something else. So you don't wanna get a super thin wire, like a 20 gauge wire and tap into that. You wanna tap into something that's a little bit thicker than this. Even though it's only pulling one amp, if that wire is only rated for five amps and it's already supporting five amps, you don't wanna fry it out. So that white wire, we're gonna look for a key on cranking source that provides 12 volts, most likely a pink wire. So this will go to that. This black wire will go to ground, which is this black wire right here. And then once that gets voltage, it already have a ground. So this relay will energize, these contacts will close. And then this blue wire on this relay here will send out power to our little fuse box. And our fuse box will have power the whole time the key is on or it's cranking. So you could also hook up like your fan relay. If your fan relay is controlled by Terminator X, you want key on power here. Now for the fans, it doesn't have to be key on cranking power, but you already have this built in, so why not hook it up to here? And because these draw, since you're gonna hook up your relay to here, and these draw less than one app each relay, you could hook up both relays to one pin, unless you have open pins, and you don't mind using all of them up, you can hook them up to its individual pin. Now what I like about this too, is you see a little red LEDs here. If that fuse ever burns out, or that fuse burns out, the LED light next to it will turn red. So it'll tell you right off the bat, hey, look, this fuse blew out, just a heads up. So that way, if you're looking for something like, hey, I don't, I forgot which fuse it is for my fans, but they're not working. You look down here, this is red. Let's pop out the fuse, see if that fixes it. I mean, obviously you should label them anyways, but just heads up. Now, like I mentioned before, you do have a ground circuit down here. You do not need to use this ground circuit. This will work perfectly fine without the ground circuit. The LEDs might not work, but the fuse, the power, and everything else will work perfectly fine without these LEDs or without these ground over here. The only reason I like to use it is because it makes grounding everything else so much easier because I provide a really good ground from here to the engine block and I just ground out everything else right here. Instead of drilling into the body or looking for a ground, I just put them right here, right here, right here, right here, and then I'm done with my day. So that's it guys, pretty simple. Um, now I'm gonna go into the dash, figure out which wire I can tap in for the 12 volts. Everything else you don't have to figure out. You just run the uh, red wire 
to the fuse, to the battery, or the back of the alternator, or the starter big fat uh, red wire. Either one of those three sources are good 12 volt powers. Um, hook up the blue wire to your uh, thing right here. Find a good place to mount this where it's kind of hidden, but easy to see in case one of these fuses blows. You can look in there and see, hey, that one blew. I need to replace that fuse. Or if you need to replace the fuse, you can get to it real quick. You don't want to like stuff in the back of the dash, and then you got to take off 10 things just to get to it. So just keep that in mind. And uh, other than that, it should be pretty easy. The ground's obviously for the relay, just ground it anywhere. You could actually even ground that relay if it's close enough to this, so you can just ground it straight to that or that. You should be fine. So let's go ahead and get started. So here's my engine harness behind the dash. Uh, this harness has wires that go to the ignition switch. As you can see, this pink one here, that one where I checked it, that is key on cranking power. So we're gonna go ahead and tap into that one. You see how fat it is? Now you see how there's other skinnier wires? I mean, you probably are safe to tap into this one too, but I would go with the fattest one you can find. Tap into that, because you know it's gonna be able to support it. You see our purple wires here? That's gonna be for a starter. And here's our, our red wires. These are gonna be for our 12 volt constant. I do not recommend hooking up your red wire from a relay to this for power. On the red wires for the, re the, red wires for the relay, you wanna go straight to the battery, the back of the alternator, or the starter because you wanna make sure you have a lot of uh, power available for that wire to support your things. If you hook it up to something like this, and let's say this is already supporting like other stuff like your radio and your headlights and everything else, and you pull more power from here for your fuses, you're gonna have issues. It could be like blowing fuses, it could be like, hey, when I try to crank it, everything goes dim into the star. It could be just all kinds of random stuff. You guys save the headache, run an extra two feet of wire to your battery, you should be fine. Now here's some of the wires that I was talking about. Uh, this is for the Terminator X. So you can see these red and white wires. These are gonna go to the fuse box that I showed you because these need to be key on cranking source. So these go straight to that. You can see how we also have black wires. So this black wire here and this black wire here, these can definitely go to the ground on that fuse box I was showing you. This red wire here, it has no red stripe or no white stripe, it's solid red wire. This one needs to go to a constant 12 volt battery source, or you could put it on the other side of that red wire that's hooked up straight to the battery. Um, you should be fine with that. But if you can hook it up straight to the battery or uh, anything that has 12 volts, it would be even better. And of course we have the gray wire for our torque converter clutch that gets hooked up to our brake switch. So every car is a little bit different guys, but I wanna give you the gist of how we're gonna set it up, how we're gonna set up the wiring by adding our own fuse box. I might pull out, put our fuse box here just because the panel actually sits up high here and we have a tunnel room back here for AC and everything else. Either that or I'll probably tuck it in underneath here, like on the bottom underneath there and then wire everything else. Um, that part's gonna be boring, but I wanna show you guys the gist of everything I'm doing. So uh, that's it for this video, guys. I don't think there's much to cover except just showing you where, where I'm gonna pick the wires at and how to tap into them. If you wanna see if you have a good 12 volt source, um, if you don't have the battery in there, uh, go to the power wire that's hooked up to the battery, read resistance from there to that pink wire, and then turn the key all the way on and cranking, and then you should read continuity. Hopefully you guys know what I'm talking about, and hopefully you guys are familiar with multimeters. Um, if you're not, you're gonna need to get used to them because if you don't check for resistance, you're gonna need to check for power when the battery's hooked up and you're ready to go and you're ready to start it. Now just a heads up, if you're checking for cranking power and your starter's hooked up, your starter will crank. So when you're here testing it out, you don't wanna be here for like 10 seconds cranking your starter. Wee, 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 wee and where are your starter. I recommend uh, checking it without the battery if you know how to check resistance or unhook the purple wire from your starter and you can check key on cranking that way and your starter will not turn over. Just a heads up. Um, all right guys, so on the next video, uh, I should have this wired finish up and we should be able to probably go through the Terminator X uh, wizard setup. And then I'm gonna show you the first star and how to adjust your idle air control, how to adjust your throttle body and everything because this is actually a drive-by wire so we we'll have to really adjust that. But I'm gonna show you what to look for on your first startup. All right guys, catch you guys on the next video.